Where's the elephant? He's stuck. Sorting out tickets. Okay. Not by choice. Danielle, good. Tricky match because it was a rematch of a match you yeah. played a couple weeks ago. So talk about just uh, the match a little bit and how tricky it was playing. Um, you know, I'm obviously very familiar with her. We even train at the same place in Florida at IMG, and um, we've had a lot of great battles. I think um, the biggest thing going into today was I knew her strengths and weaknesses, and I tried not to plan into her strengths too much. And um, I knew I was going to have to fight for every point. Um, she's really tough competitor and doesn't give you any free opportunities um so i had to just keep my foot on the gas and and uh play very smart the entire way through you had said the other day that it was important for you to kind of remind yourself to take your opportunities when those opportunities came and not you know be a, yeah. a wuss uh in those moments i mean did you feel like that was a similar thing today yeah, I think that's a similar theme, especially sometimes when you get up in the score. And I think he, you know, sometimes we have the tendency to maybe back off a little bit. And I had a moment there when I was up 2 0 in the second, and she got it to 3 2. And I realized that I needed to start taking a couple more chances and opportunities that she was giving me and, and uh, just be brave and, and not think about it twice. Does it feel like kind of a whirlwind? You get here as a wild card, and now you're on a roll. Yeah, I mean, luckily I had the experience last year playing this tournament and, you know, it didn't go the way that I wanted to. I kind of got crushed in the first round last year and now, you know, I know what to expect and um, I'm more confident, I'm more familiar with the players um, and I'm just learning more and more and I think that, you know, you can see that when I'm on the court. What is it about this tournament, this venue, what have you, that's particularly challenging. That's challenging? Yeah. You know, I don't really, like this year, I feel so comfortable playing here. Um, all of the fans are incredible. I mean, we're in the desert, it's so beautiful here. Um, I don't really feel like I have any challenges right now playing here. I think last year I just didn't, I had a little bit of a lack of experience and um, didn't really know what to expect when I played Puig first round. So that was an eye opener. Um, but this year I'm so much more comfortable and I'm really embracing this environment, playing in front of a lot of people, being on a big stage, and, you know, this is what we work so hard for. Would you say you were overwhelmed last year? A little bit, yeah, I think so. You know, I, I think that was the second time I had played in a stadium that big, and, you know, sometimes you have to get used to that a little bit, and um, it takes a, a little bit of experience. I came in late, so apologies if you've been asked. Uh, but could you talk about the role of the funding you got uh, last year? How has that, how has that help, helped you? Yeah, I think um, Oracle stepping up to the plate and um, prioritizing college tennis and making college tennis important, that's so special to me since I went the college route. And so many players on tour, you're seeing more and more going the college route, but really there's not a lot compared to the people that turn pro when they're like 14, 15, 16. Um, and so college tennis does have, does need to have the recognition. And I think by, you know, stepping up, making a big financial commitment to me and Mackenzie McDonald, I think um, it takes a lot of the financial burden off of us when we're out on the court because that's such a big thing when you're getting started. It's so expensive. Um, things add up really fast when you're playing like 30 tournaments a year or more. And um, I think the biggest thing was just being able to go out on the court and play freely and know that Oracle had my back and that they were going to help me for the entire year. And um, I think. I actually started performing a lot better once I had that kind of financial security. And if I could, the, the, did you sp spend the money just all over the place or did you focus on coaching or? Um, well, you know, we spent money in different areas. So coaching was one of the big ones that I wanted. I wanted to have a coach on the road with me all the time that was dedicated to just working with me. You know, we um, put some money into really working on my strength and conditioning and making sure I was working with the best people. Um, you know, doctors, um, sports psychologists, everything. So every area has kind of been attended to and that wouldn't have been really possible without their support.
Danielle, when we first met and talked, it was at the Oracle Challenger Series, and there you did tell me that this, your first time or last time at the BNP, you were struggling and that you hoped for a better run this year. Do you feel the Oracle helped prepare you for this? I really do. I think they gave me a lot of confidence and um, it really made me feel important being a part of such a huge um, inaugural grant. I mean, I think that support has gone a long way. Speaking of the financial burden, what's the most absurd thing that you've had to do to kind of save money, you know, like within tennis? Like the most absurd thing. Where you look back on it now and it's oh. absurd. I mean, sometimes, you know, we do <laughs> housing. <laughs> I, I don't know if there's been anything too absurd. I know that, I think when I was younger, like before I went to college, one time I took a Greyhound bus when I was like 16, and that was very terrifying. I From wouldn't where? really recommend that for most young girls. <laughs> um, it was pretty scary, but it was, you know, either an $80 bus ride or a $600 flight. So it was kind of a no-brainer at the time. <laughs> from where to where did you take the bus? I think it was from, I think it was from maybe Tampa to Miami. Yeah, the flights were kind of expensive, so I took the bus. <laughs> so, so this experience of making the round of 16 at a premier mandatory, it's a pretty big deal. Does it feel like a big deal to you, or does it? What's your um, yeah, it definitely feels like a big deal because I've never gone this far in a tournament, so this is pretty special. But at the same time, I've worked really hard for this, and I know in my heart that I really deserve it, and um, all of my work, hard work is really paying off, and I'm just really fortunate um, to have had the success here. Next up, you play, yeah, next up you play Carla Suarez Navarro. How much do you know about her, and what do you anticipate there? Um, I don't really know a lot about her, but I know my coaches will give me a good game plan and we'll try to execute. We will execute. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs>